It's the start of spring break, but we're in for winter weather. Find out when we might see snow. Hear how an OU alum is helping Ukraine's war-torn families in the latest in the Norman Turnpike fight. We'll take a look at another significant impact. This is OU Nightly. Welcome to OU Nightly. I'm Shannon Earhart. And I'm Audrey Goodson. A cold front traveling through Oklahoma could bring some snow tomorrow. Brady Blackstock joins us in studio with what we can expect. Brady? Audrey, Shannon, the entire state of Oklahoma is currently under a winter weather advisory. The western part of the state and the panhandle, that advisory is going to last till noon tomorrow. But the rest of the state, it's going to last till 6 p.m. tomorrow. And if you've been outside, then you already know it's getting cold. You can see the cold front moving through right now. Temperatures up in Guyman already below freezing, whereas in the southeastern part of the state, still above freezing, but they're going to drop significantly. As you can see in the past 24 hours, temperatures have been dropping 40 degrees up in the panhandle and coming up in Maine weather. I'm going to be talking about the winter weather tomorrow, how it's going to affect that spring break travel if you're going to be hitting the roads and uh, looking forward to a weekend warm up on Saturday. Audrey Shannon, back to you. Thanks, Brady. Ukrainian citizens are outraged after the Russian strike on a maternity hospital in Maripool on Wednesday. Officials claim this attack is a war crime which killed two adults and a young child. A reported 17 people have been wounded, including a pregnant woman who is there wanting to give birth. Food and medical supplies are being delivered to the cities of Ukraine as civilians try to escape the torment. But uh, what we have now in Ukraine every day, we have uh, innocent civilians who are killed, murdered. The World Health Organization confirmed that there have been 18 attacks on medical facilities since the beginning of the war. The Wall Street Journal says every three seconds, two Ukrainian refugees enter the neighboring country of Poland. Our Dylan Rivera is live with the story to tell us how one American felt, one American on the ground felt compelled to help. Dylan? As the U.S. continues to watch from across the globe, many Americans are looking for ways to help Ukraine. One woman from right here in the Sooner State used Facebook to give people here at home a way to help. From a quiet neighborhood in Kingfisher, Oklahoma. <laughs> to the outskirts of the war in Europe. Katie Sholin has seen nearly one and a half million Ukrainian refugees enter her home of Poland. It's, it's very scary here. It's very nerve wracking. Um, it's really sad to see the situation in the news. And I knew that I couldn't just stay on Twitter or stay on these news websites and just look at this news all day. That's when Katie took to Facebook, offering to buy supplies for refugees entering into Poland. And sure enough, People stepped up and Katie went shopping. We bought shampoo, uh, body soap, um, feminine products, medicine like Tylenol, ibuprofen, Band-Aids, toothbrushes, toothpaste. We bought socks, gloves, towels, headlamps for maybe people that were um, either going into fight also. Um, headlamps for them. We bought some binoculars. For citizens here in Norman, there's still a way to help. A benefit concert is set up at the Lazy Circles Brewing Company, with all proceeds going straight to Poland and Ukraine. There's a total of nine organizations within Ukraine and Poland that will be receiving the money. Um, some of them are working at the border of Poland and Ukraine, getting the refugees to homes with sleeping bags, blankets, food, medicine. And then there's some that are going into actually into Ukraine for the military that is going to uh, provide aid to them. The concert takes place right here at the Lazy Circles Brewing Company on Sunday at 4 p.m. It costs just one $10 donation per person. Dylan Rivera, OU Nightly. That's great. Thanks, Dylan. Vice President Kamala Harris visited Poland to sort out the country's stance with Ukraine. Dana Siros tells us what Harris has found so far. Thanks, Shannon. Vice President Kamala Harris held a joint presser with Polish President Andrzej Duda today. During the news conference, the two leaders spoke on how they plan to defend the principles around the NATO alliance. Both the United States and Poland want to help Ukraine while avoiding direct conflict with Russia. 
the United States takes seriously that an attack against one is an attack against all. Harris plans to use the rest of this trip to talk about the next steps in Eastern Europe's handling of the conflict. And the former Empire actor is scheduled to be sentenced today. Jussie Smollett is being sentenced for falsely reporting to police that he was a victim of a hate crime. The actor was found guilty in December for making false reports about what he said was an anti-gay and anti-black hate crime. Chicago police investigated the incident and say that Smollett set up the attack on himself. The judge has denied a motion to dismiss the conviction. And today, two men became the first same-sex couple to marry under Chile's new law. The couple has been together for seven years and previously legalized their status as a couple under the civil union agreement. With two adopted children, the couple says that now they can say they are a family. The law says that the term husband and wife will be replaced with spouse, and the law now lists parent instead of mother and father. And the trial for the four men charged with plotting to kidnap Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Today, the jury heard the recorded audio where one of the men specifically discusses the abduction plan. Audrey, back to you. Thanks, Dana. Norman Mayor Bria Clark has officially joined many Norman residents in opposing the new Turnpike expansion. Mayor Clark stated in a Facebook post that people of Norman do not approve of the construction pro project and property owners have, been, have not been consulted about the potential destruction of their homes. Clark says that she won't go down without a fight and is asking for a draft of the resolution to the problem. Now, if the turnpike does get built, many businesses are in jeopardy of losing their property. OU Nightly's Avery Gorman has more on how a honeybee farm would be affected. A farm in New Walla housing our buzzing friends is in danger of losing their homes because of a new turnpike. Adkin Farms sits on 50 acres of land and is home to 42 beehives. The turnpike that is proposed to come to the area will take off the eastern and southern edges of their property, meaning they will lose around 10 acres of their land. My wife and I have just really fallen in love with this place and there's lots of people like my next door neighbor has been here uh, a lot longer than I have. He says it's his uh, prized possession. While it is expected that OTA will compensate for the land lost, it's the damage to the bees as well as other wildlife they are worried about. I mean, we just keep taking these habitats and these are delicate habitats that there's not a lot of them left. I mean, we've got to quit displacing wildlife at some point. And especially when I think we can do it other ways. The Adkins use the honey as income and they even had plans to build on the land. Now they aren't exactly sure. The noise will be a big factor for the bees. Uh, the bees uh, would not like the vibrations. It would be, make my business really a lot harder. The Atkinson searched for seven years to find land that was close enough to Oklahoma City, but enough land to house the honeybees. They purchased this land in 2021, and it's possible they could lose part of it now. Avery Gorman, OU Nightly. Citizens who oppose the turnpike can contact their legislator or Governor Kevin Stitt himself. And just when we thought COVID was slowing down, the CDC says not so fast. Find out what this looks like when it comes to your spring break plans. And if you test positive for COVID-19, a new solution is in the works. The treatment is very similar to Tamiflu. Find out when it might be available coming up next. Well, I know I'm headed for Florida for spring break. Shannon, aren't you headed to the Sunshine State as well? Audrey, I am, and I'm so excited. I cannot <laughs> wait. I know that Ashley Vandevelde has the health updates we need to know as we head on vacation. The mask mandate for travelers in the United States will be extended another month. The requirement is set to expire on March 18th, but federal officials say there will be an announcement extending it another 30 days. The mandate is one of the last remaining broad requirements for Americans to wear masks in public places. It applies to all mass transportation, including planes, trains, buses and airports. More than 2.5 million high school students use tobacco products in the past 30 days. The 2021 National Youth Tobacco Survey found the majority of used products were e-cigarettes. The numbers show a decline from 2019 to 2020, especially when it comes to vaping. But experts caution against comparing 2021 to previous years because data was collected differently during the pandemic due to, to include students learning remotely. 
and you are about to be able to treat yourself for COVID-19. If you test positive for COVID-19, you can get free antiviral medication to help treat it on the spot. Patients are expected to be able to receive the antiviral through the test to treat program later this week. Certain pharmacies, including CVS, Walgreens and Walmart, confirm some of their locations will take part in the program. The pill works best when taken within a few days of the start of symptoms. To find a location taking part, there will be a test to treat website expected to launch in mid-March. And as you head on spring break, be aware that one beer or glass of wine a day may cause the brain to shrink with age. That's what I read in the journal Nature, you guys. Wow, that's really interesting to know. I didn't know that, so yeah, thanks, I Ashley. know. But if you're looking for something fun to do in Norman before leaving town, find out where you can show a latte of love to local artists. And Brady, you said there's freezing rain coming through Norman. Are we going to have trouble traveling out of town for spring break tomorrow? If you're planning on traveling tomorrow on Friday, you might have some difficulty coming through. But coming up in Maine weather, I'll break down our freezing rain and snow chances for Friday. Welcome back to OU Nightly. My name is Brady Blackstock. It is getting colder by the hour here in Oklahoma with temperatures currently at 38 with that strong north wind of 25 miles per hour coming in, bringing and pushing forward a strong cold front that is going to bring some winter weather on Friday. As you can see right here, you can see the cold front moving all the way across the state. Still nice and warm in the southeast part of the state, but that is not going to last as these northwestern temperatures will soon take over the entire state leaving us with a strong winter weather advisory. This advisory is going to last into noon tomorrow for the western and northwestern parts of the state, but the southeastern for the rest of the part of the states and up in Tulsa, that's going to last until 6 p.m. on Friday. And this will affect our spring break travel plans. If you're planning on leaving tonight uh, through a flight through uh, at Will Rogers World Airport, it is going to be cold, so if you're going somewhere warm, you're going to need to take a jacket to just to get to the airport because it's going to be chilly. The flights are going to be on time tonight as this storm isn't moving in <clears throat> until overnight, which is going to cause some delays on Friday at the airport. It's going to happen early in the morning, and if those delays happen, it's going to scatter throughout the rest of the day. So be careful throughout as you're traveling tomorrow, and especially if you're hitting the road or going home for the holiday break. 8 a.m. tomorrow, we're going to see those temperatures well below freezing and snow is, and freezing rain is going to start falling early in the morning into noon and then it's going to last throughout the rest of the day. Let's take a look at the radar as we see it's going to move through. It's going to hit Tulsa around 9 in the morning and then into Norman about in the afternoon and we're going to see some storms in the southeast as it's going to move out through the rest of the day and we might see some snow. Looking at 8 a.m., 30% chance going all the way up to an 80% chance at noon through around Norman. And snow totals anywhere from trace to one inch up to three to four inches up in the panhandle. It's mostly going to be in the northern parts of the state that's going to see the most amounts of snow. And the wind chill, it's going to be very frigid, so be mindful. It's, it's below freezing, but it's going to feel much colder than that. Snow on Friday, that's the big story, but the good news, the rest of the week, your spring break, it is going to be sunny, and that's going to do it, and enjoy your spring break. Audrey Shannon, make some plans for the rest of the week, but not tomorrow. Thanks, Brady, and speaking of that cold weather, if you want to warm up with a cup of coffee tonight, stop by Second Wind Coffee House. 11 local artists will be showcasing their art outside of the shop on Campus Corner. The main goal of the festival is for artists who normally don't have a space to showcase their work to gain exposure. Making a, Making a space where uh, people can like share the things that they create um, and uh, lift each other up, whether that be like by buying their work or just by giving them a follow on social media. The festival runs from 6.30 to 9 tonight. Now it's the second week of March, which means it's conference championship week and it's in full swing right now. I know Hallie has some information on OU hoops and they're on the road. What can you tell us? That's right. It's a big weekend for both teams with men's basketball kicking off the action tonight. And hear what OU women's head coach Jenny Baranchik has to say ahead of tomorrow's redemption matchup. Sports is next.
Welcome back to OU Nightly. I'm Hallie Moss. Let's talk sports. Tonight at the Big 12 tournament in Kansas City, the Sooners take on the number three ranked Baylor. The men are coming off a three game winning streak after beating Kansas State on the road last weekend. That road win also ended their nine game road losing streak. If the Sooners want a chance at keeping their NCAA tournament dreams alive, they'll need to clinch the win tonight. And the OU women's basketball team just can't get away from the Jayhawks. After a home loss last week to Kansas, the Sooners are looking for redemption tomorrow morning at the Big 12 tournament. And the women are still ranked one spot above the Jayhawks, but haven't won a game in this tournament since 2016. OU head coach Jenny Baranchik is off to a historic start in her first year with the team, being named a semifinalist for National Coach of the Year. When asked about the upcoming game, Coach Jenny just wants the team to go for it on every one of those possessions because I think we have opportunity to get better. I think it's nice to know uh, that we have a great body of work going into this tournament. Um, and at the same time, who cares? It's March. Like, go for it. Like, go have fun. Go play. Go, you know, stay as a team. Stay connected as a team. Have incredible energy and just play every possession. So and breaking news, baseball is back. The MLB owners and players reached a tentative deal today, clearing the way for spring training to start. Spring training had initially been canceled due to an owner-imposed lockout of players after the sides failed to reach a financial agreement. The MLB's minimum salary will now start at $700,000, increasing $250,000. The season is now slated to start April 7th. And the undefeated Sooner softball team headed to Hawaii just in time for spring break. History was delayed during their game against Minnesota when the Gophers walked Jocelyn Allo three separate times. The senior home run queen is tied right now for the NCAA mark at 95 career home runs. And maybe it's fate Allo didn't get to hit because she'll resume her chase tonight against Baylor in her home state. And OU baseball starts their first of a three-game home set with UTSA tomorrow night. After coming off a rough weekend in Houston, the Sooners returned to home soil on Tuesday in a close win over Dallas Baptist. The thrilling win gave Oklahoma a winning record at 6-5 and, and snapped their three-game losing streak. OKC fell short to the Minnesota Timberwolves for the fourth time this season. With eight players out due to various injuries, the Thunder are shorthanded and playing a bench unit primarily composed of players from the G League. Their next game is Sunday at home against Memphis. And a 25-year-old woman is suing Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones and claiming that he's her father. The lawsuit says Jones and the women's mother reached a settlement to financially support the mother and child as long as they didn't identify Jones as the father. It is unclear why Alexandra Davis has chosen to file the lawsuit now, but it mentions health concerns of her mother. And a big move is happening in the NFL today. The Chicago Bears are attempting to finalize a trade that will send six-time Pro Bowl defensive end Khalil Mack to the Los Angeles Chargers. Tough look for me. It's a tough look. Well, thanks, Hallie. You know, spring break is only two days away, and I just can't wait to go to the beach. Well, Audrey, there's actually a new creature that's not found on the beach, but in the ocean. I'll tell you about it when we come back. I'm Adam Dickinson at the OU Nightly Update Desk. Anti-abortion legislation modelled after the Texas heartbeat law took a big step forward today after advancement from the Oklahoma State Senate. Like its te controversial Texan counterpart, Bill 1503 will mean anyone who provides, aids or abets an abortion after a heartbeat is detected in the embryo or fetus can be sued for a minimum of $10,000. The Texas law has already forced thousands of women across state lines into Oklahoma to seek an abortion since September last year. Back to you in the studio. As I said, spring break is only two days away, and if your trip happens to be in the Maldives, there's a new species swimming up 229 feet below the ocean surface. Scientists discovered a colorful school of fish hiding in the coral reefs of the Maldives. The new species belongs to the wrasse family, which consists largely of bright-colored fish. The scientific name honors the Maldivian national flower, the pink rose. Now, Brady, can you tell us anything else you might need to know going into spring break? Absolutely, Shannon. We have icy road warnings for tomorrow. There's going to be some snow, some freezing rain. And the thing to remember if you're going out to travel for spring break is that those bridges are going to freeze before the roads. So be extra careful. Give yourself extra time to get to where you're going for. And you should be all right because this is only going to last for tomorrow. And if we go ahead and look at the seven day forecast, we see that Friday 
We are going to see some of that snow, but the rest of the spring break looking pretty good. It might not be the Maldives, Shannon and Audrey, but it's looking pretty good aside from tomorrow. But just be weary if you're traveling tomorrow. Well, thanks, Brady, and thanks for tuning into OU Nightly. This is our last show until after spring break, but we'll see you again on March 21st. Same time and the same place. Stay safe, and we'll see you in two weeks.